Uh, I just want to preface this by saying um, I am really just going to one take Jake this video um, simply because I don't really want to spend the time to edit. I'm kind of lazy right now, but yeah, but, um, I look like duty because uh, I just got off work semi recently. Um, I have a lot of Splatoon that I want to play. I actually tried to record this video while playing Splatoon and that was atrocious. So yeah, um, the scandal going around the VGC community right now. As well as you, gonna win take Jake it still. As you may be well aware, many players at the World Championships for VGC were disqualified due to having ginned Pokemon. There's a lot to unpack here. I'm just gonna start by getting something out of the way. I'm not making this commentary to bash any player who got disqualified. Even though I don't agree with people ginning their Pokemon, I have a feel for those who unexpectedly got disqualified. Like, that sucks. Just absolutely sucks. But, um, to start, Pokemon has never been more accessible to have a competitively viable team than it is now. EV training is so easy thanks to the power items and also vitamins and feathers. Um, starting in Generation 8, vitamins let you actually EV train the entire stat from 0 to 252 EVs. Uh, it used to only be for the first 100 EVs per stat. Now you can go all the way. If you want to be real specific with your EVs, um, you have your feathers, which are very easy to get in the Scarlet and Violet. Um, EV training, super crazy easy. Um, IVs are easier to get um, now than ever with breeding, with your um, your Destiny Knots. Um, also with like all the raids giving you, you know, four and five IV Pokemon. It's so stinking easy to IV breed. Um, also, with IVs, you have bottle caps, which when bottle caps were first introduced, your Pokemon had to be level 100. Now they only have to be level 50. And when we're talking about Pokemon that really benefit from bottle caps, which means Pokemon you cannot breed, um, legendaries, they all... I just now realized there's a scratch. Oh, oh, that's not a scratch. No, oops. Oh, well. I'm an idiot. Oh, I thought it was a scratch on my camera. I'm distracted. One take Jake, guys. <coughs> Yeah, when it comes to most Pokemon that um, benefit from bottle caps, they're already above level 50 because they're legendaries or like they are, um, they're Pokemon that, you know, evolve later or something like that or etc, etc. Though 50 is not that hard to get to. Anybody playing the game knows that. Um, bottle caps make IV so much easier. Um, also, resetting EVs, you have easy access to berries to do so so much more accessible than it's ever been in any series before um the difference between making a competitively viable legally competitively viable team in generation 3 generation 4 even generation 5 compared to what it is now in generation 9 it's a night and day difference there are so many resources that you can go to to see the difference we should all know at this point but um egg moves don't even require you breed any, anymore. They just require you to have a Pokemon that's within the egg group that knows the move and your Pokemon to you click forget on one of the moves so it has an empty move slot. Slap a mirror orb on one or both of the Pokemon. I'm pretty sure just both. I don't know. I always put it on both because I have the finances in game to do so because they're easy to get a hold of and then I just slap them both in the party open up the picnic, immediately close up the picnic and boom! You have your egg move. It's pretty stinking amazing. Um... Yeah, leveling up is also easy due to insane raid rewards, um, due to, um, you know, all the EXP candies, the EXP candy L's and, and extra lodges and all that kind of jazz. Super crazy easy. Um, even though all this is true, there was somewhat dark truth to the accessibility of Pokemon. Um, I'm going to put on screen right now, if I can remember, in, in the little tiny bit of editing that I'm doing within this video. Um, there are five Pokemon out of the top 12 Pokemon used at Worlds, according to Pokemon, what they show during day one of the tournament. Five of those Pokemon are transfer-only Pokemon, meaning those Pokemon can only be obtained if you own another game and have transferred it over. To me personally, this doesn't really raise an issue. Um, if you don't know, I'm a bit of a Nintendo nerd. Um, Shoot, my prop is over here. <laughs> Very little preparation over here, and it's under a stack of things. Uh, this 
this case right here, um, it's the biggest case that you can get for the Nintendo Switch. It holds up to 96 Nintendo Switch games. And, um, physical. And I own quite a few games. Physically. Um, that's Splatoon 3, which is sitting in my Switch right now. Yeah, and as you can see, I have spots, you know, ready for Super Mario Wonder and the Super Mario RPG remake. Um, my, one of my sisters, she borrowed a game of mine. That's where that one is. So there's really, by the end of this calendar year, there's going to be just one spot open right there. And that's the, that's the Sonic game coming out, Sonic Superstars. So by the end of this year, I'm, um, if I don't buy any more games outside of what I've already fully pre-ordered, I'm going to have exactly 95 games. As you see, owning all the Pokemon games is um, not an issue for me, as you can see right there. Not an issue. I'm not bragging about this. I um, am just a collector, and I absolutely love the Nintendo Switch. It's my favorite console of all time. Uh, but I know not everybody's in the same situation as me. Um... But enough of that tangent. Um, also, obviously, you know, I have the DLC attached to those games. Um, so accessibility for me personally, um, and I know for a lot of other competitors out there that own Sword and Shield or Sword or Shield and the DLC, you know, they accessibility-wise, they have good accessibility to transfer Pokemon. Um, but I've realized that that's not everybody. Some people just own the individual game that they're competing in, especially people that are new to the franchise that are competing, you know. I, I know there's a lot of people that um, they might come from watching the show, or they might come from even just the TCG or something, they're like, oh, you know what, there's a, there's a game attached to this, I really want to play. Um, oh, what, there's a competitive scene around it too? Sweet, I'm going to go compete. And they, you know, do a lot of research and learning, and they only have the one game, and so... Um, being in a format like we're in right now, where they have transfer only Pokemon um, within the format, it's kind of tough for those people. Um, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, of course it should be an advantage if you own multiple games in a franchise that'll, that'll allow you to transfer over Pokemon. Um, if you own multiple or all the games, etc., etc. What about new competitors? A little bit of a touchy subject, of course. Uh, why so? I thought esports don't really reward players who bought older games uh, with better weapons. Like, let's look at Splatoon, for instance. Splatoon, I got over here on my other screen. Um, if you played Splatoon 2 and you bought Splatoon 3, you, you get a voucher in-game that lets you get three weapons for free. Um, but you still have accessibility to get those weapons just naturally playing Splatoon 3 anyway. So you're not getting an advantage for playing the other games um other ones like valorant which valorant is a new one so that doesn't really have past games so that's a bad example um like call of duty you know you don't have an advantage <clears throat> that you play call of duty black ops 2 in a high school and and that you played modern warfare um two or three uh, I, don't, I don't remember which number it was back then in, in in middle school and you don't get an advantage that you played um insert Call of Duty game here, Call of Duty Ghosts. I know, terrible game, the black sheep of the franchise, as if none of the games were good anyway, modernly, but we're not going to go into that. But, um, you know, you don't get an advantage in that eSport for, for buying the other games. Um, but in Pokemon, you do. Well, Pokemon's eSport is more akin to, like, a TCG. Um, TCGs, you absolutely get an advantage for owning multiple sets, for owning older cards and, and whatnot that are still legal within the current, um, the current rule set and whatnot. You totally get an advantage there. That's like a normal thing. Um, and top TCG players, if you ask them, they spend hundreds, hundreds, and even thousands of dollars. Actually, I have a good friend of mine who's probably going to be commenting in this video. He probably himself has spent thousands on Yu-Gi-Oh!, and he competes. Um, so, yeah, it, like spending money on your esport um, and having an advantage because you spent a lot of money isn't an unhealthy or toxic thing. Um, with the two sides of the coin to this we're going to get into, but here's what I kind of want to get out of the way ginning and cheating is just never okay. It just isn't. 
and the Pokemon company has every right to enforce their cheating rules. And yes, we all know that being caught ginning is cheating. Yes, I ordered it that way on purpose because they're still going to, no matter how hard Game Freak slash the Pokemon Company, opposite order, the Pokemon Company tries, there's going to be people that are still ginning and cheating and just don't get caught. And that's the tough part about esports and sports in general. There's people that that happens in real life sports too. Um, it just is what it is. But, um,. There are a massive amount of players who still gin because simply it just gives them an advantage to do so. I see all over online that, oh, the stats are equal. Um, players who don't gin and players who gin can still get the exact same Pokemon, so ginning doesn't give you an advantage. It does, though. How do you ask? While one player who gins... Uh, Sorry, I'm reading the script wrong. One take Jake in here. While one player who gets all their Pokemon correctly and legally is spending tons of time doing so, training their Pokemon up, getting the sets right, getting the EVs right, getting the moves right, getting everything right, they are spending a, a huge time dump on that, and then they have separate time for training with their team, as in battling, testing it out. They have, in order to create a team, you have to theory craft the team, you have to build the team, test the team, and then change the team to better fit the meta, the whatever you're facing. It's a whole big time dump you have to do all three. But ginning cuts out one of those time dumps, which means you get to spend more time doing the others, which is immensely valuable. Um, it's a very clear advantage. Also, people who make their own sets without ginning do still get a lot of time to practice. I'm not saying that people who make their own sets just don't get to practice. That's not what I'm saying. But it's way more time consuming um, to change sets compared to those who, who gin. So once you've made your team, and I've, I've noticed this myself back when I competed in Knoxville, when I was making my team, um, I had an entire box worth of Pokemon that I was training up, that I was trying to pick and choose who got on my team and I finally made my final team of, okay, I'm locking this in about a week before the tournament. And I did my final preparations and testing. And during that final week, I trained up another half a box worth of Pokemon to try different sets to see how they functioned together. All this for me to go three and six. I'm new to competing. I'm not saying that three and six is good because I'm new to competing. That same tournament, a w amazing, wonderful guy who's new to competing named Justin Tang won. So, and he went on to win another regional. He went on to, um, later on in the year, he went on to com um, compete literally in Worlds. Um, what I'm trying to get is, get at is just simply, if you're ginning, you do have an upper hand. Also, just flat out, it's against the rules. But why do people still do it? Why do people still do it? It's precisely that. They get an upper hand. This also coupled with the Pokemon company has been very lax with enforcing it. And I wouldn't even necessarily they've been lax in, in, in enforcing it. I don't think they've had the tools to properly enforce it. Um, Any time that they get to a point where they're like, all right, we can catch you. Um, ginning because of um, this code that we put into Pokemon Home or this code we put into the game. People who make the ginning software just update the software to bypass that. And so it's a constant battle for the Pokemon company to really be able to enforce that. So what I think they did at this event is they said, okay, we're going to take all insane measures and we're just going to do it all at once at the event to make sure we catch people here because we're not good enough to catch people on their court and in trading and, and battling online. But they were good enough to catch the generals there. And that's what, that's how they stopped them. Um, again, I'm not going to go into to attacking anybody who gins. And seriously, from the bottom of my heart, I know how much money people spent to go out to Japan and compete and to after three rounds and get disqualified. That sucks. Well, after two rounds, after one round, after five rounds, to get disqualified. Because you broke the rules. You knew the rules going into it. 
but you weren't expecting. You were trying to kind of squeak by. It sucks. I feel for you. It sucks, but it's still against the rules. And you cannot be angry at the Pokemon Company for that. And you cannot be angry at those of us who choose not to gin. Um, also, as a side note, kind of mentioned this. I don't think um, the Pokemon ginning checks have gotten extreme, like extremely better where they were like, the Pokemon company was like sitting behind the scenes like, <laughs> they don't know that we're going to be able to catch them because we've come up with new things. I think people have failed to realize this entire VGC season um, within the different rule sets before they were called regulations. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. It really hadn't been long. I think they were just called rule sets. Seasons. I think it was called season one, like rule set two. I can't remember what they were called, but within this, um, regulation D, which is what the current world's format is in, is the forced tr um, format that, it, that allows transfer-only Pokemon. All previous formats um, allowed only Pokemon that you could catch on cult. Um, because Pokemon Home didn't exist before then, and when Pokemon Home did exist during Regulation C, Regulation C was made um, with it in mind that you can't transform any Pokemon. So every Regulation C Pokemon, you're able to get on cult. So people did that. Um, but so those those competitors who don't have want or are unable to get older games etc etc they have to make a choice to be extremely creative within their team building um and make their pokemon extremely legal and choose not to use pokemon that they can't get or they gen them or they trade with somebody hoping and begging that the person they're trading with didn't gen it or the, poke, or the person they're training with didn't get it from somebody who did it. All this to say, it sucks that a lot of people got disqualified, but the rules are the rules, and the Pokemon Company has to enforce them. Also, again, did I already read this? Yeah, no, I haven't yet. Also, the Pokemon Company enforcing the rules makes it better for competitors who go out of the way to do things correctly. We shouldn't be whining. Competitors who don't gin are finally getting the upper hand for all the time spent playing the video games to do things right. They're actually playing Pokemon. If you ask somebody what the difference between Pokemon and a complex game of chess, the answer is not just how Pokemon interact in battle, but it's how you get them there to begin with. The Pokemon series is one of the most complex but yet simple games of all time. It's what made every single one of us that are competing love this game. Why are we whining that we have to go back to playing it correctly? I do not understand it. It's a big time investment for people to do things correctly. It's huge time dump, time investment. You should be rewarded as such. And how are you rewarded as such? The people that are not dumping as much time should be disqualified. Continuing to allow rampant generals punishes... <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't read because the camera's right there and the, the wards are right behind it. Continuing to allow rampant generals punishes the time and effort to do things correctly for people competing properly. I'm going to move my script. I'm sorry that this is now to the point where, oh, hey, wait, I can just, whoop, that might, no, I'm still going to, I don't know. <clears throat> so how do we, how do we remedy this? How do we remedy this? Here are the options. Don't gin anymore, guys. Come on, it's 2023. We should know better now. Don't gin anymore. It is not worth the risk. We see that they are willing to go all out and enforcing their rules now. Also, why are you playing a top level game while also cutting corners to get better? We need to do better. We need to also do something that is very key for accessibility reasons. I already went over 
The game is extremely accessible compared to where it used to be. It is not perfectly accessible. How do we get there? We open our voices. I don't know what that was. Sometimes I like to talk with my hand and that was weird. We need to open our voices loudly to the Pokemon Company, to Game Freak, to never, ever allow us to do a format that includes Pokemon that are only exclusively available via transfer. It's okay to play a format that the Pokemon can be accessed via transfer, so long as they are also available straight up on the court. I don't care if you have to buy DLC for that current gen to do it, because that's accessible. You are buying something for that current gen to be a better competitor. That's more accessible. That's what we need to do. We need to voice our opinions on that. We need to beg. We need to plead. We need to write help tickets, I guess, if that's a thing. I don't really know if that's a thing. I hear people saying that all the time. Like, oh my gosh, if you have a problem, write a help ticket. This, I don't know if it works that way. If it does, let's do it. But if not, just continue to voice our opinions. If this video somehow gets around, or this snippet of it gets around to anybody, I don't care if you give me credit. I really honestly don't. I just want the competitive scene to be better. That's all I care about. Um, use your platforms to spread that. To just, you know, use your platforms as leverage to... To say, hey, Pokemon Company, um, I know you care about me playing the game. This is what I want out of the game. I, I want, I want us to, you know, to have formats that if you're going to allow a bunch of crazy Pokemon in it, will give us access, you know, before putting the format up. Because I guarantee you, all the Pokemon that are available within this format, by the time DLC comes around, we're gonna have access to. It's it's tradition at this point, but. They just kind of jumped the gun too soon, which honestly, from their perspective, a little side note, a little tangent, not in my script, I understand why they went with Regulation B. We went with Regulation C for a majority of the season, and not that the Regulation C format had been cracked, had been found out, but we were watching Regulation C matches literally from like February. Uh, like I competed in Regulation C in Knoxville, I believe that was the first regulation one. If we would have been doing regulation C matches from Knoxville all the way to August, that would have been a really long one format thing. So I understand them wanting to change it to make worlds more interesting. Totally understand that. I honestly don't think it was a dumb idea for them. Um, and honestly, if you think it was a dumb idea for them because you got caught cheating, I think you need to reevaluate yourself. Yes, I said that. Controversial. Is what it is. Um, I'm not out here saying that people who gin, by the way, are bad at the game, or are lazy, or are not true competitors, because that just isn't the case. I know y'all, I, I know a bunch of people that gin, that put in a poop ton of time into the game. I'm just saying that it's not as fail, and I'm, and what I'm saying is it's against the rules. We need to do better. Can't cut corners anymore. You have to do it the right way. And we should not be angry at the Pokemon Company who has every right to enforce their rules. I'm gonna end it here. Um, stay fresh out there, guys. Be positive out there. Don't be hateful to those who might not agree with these words that I'm saying. Don't be hateful. I'm not gonna be hateful either. Um, I'm gonna try my best to. I've probably gotten riled up a little bit over the last you know, day or so or whatever, but you know, I'm gonna try not to be hateful um, to those who just might not agree with me. And it is what it is. If you disagree with me, cool. Comment down. Hit the dislike. Share it. Say this guy is so dumb and he's ugly and his hair looks like crap because he hadn't taken a shower since this morning and he walked at a full-time shift and his wife is sick and he's been trying to take care of her and she's um, laying down right now resting and so I'm going to shoot this quick little video and then go back to snuggling with her to make sure she's alright. But, although the Pokemon games are so much more accessible compared to how the, what they used to be as far as making a competitive team, it still needs to be improved to be more accessible. We need to voice our opinions about that. What we don't need to do is to, con is to continue cheating. That's not the way you combat this. Love you guys. Stay fresh. Probably already said. Gummy out. Boop. Well, it's not how I'm going to end it. Actually, I'm going to end it like this. Actually, no. That was dumb. I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ah!